Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. Today we're gonna do a very special list. Top 10 perfumes to wear after a breakup. Yeah, relationship breakup, friendship breakup, love affair breakup, marriage breakup. You name it, we're gonna smell it. Now this video idea was brought to us by a dear friend of mine, also a member of my main channel, also a subscriber of my channel, Louis. By the way, I'm gonna post a link to Louis's YouTube channel down below, so be sure to check him out. He does review perfumes as well, but he talks a lot about fashion too. So thank you, Louis, for this wonderful idea. Also, while you're at it, you can subscribe to my channel here on the tubes and uh, join me on Patreon, Super Deco Balls Spelled Together for extra perks. Thank you to my members and patrons who have pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of my patrons and members right now, so I have the chats on the side. They get access to the video before anybody else. So, ooh, exciting. Okay, so 10 perfumes for a breakup situation. Could you imagine? So when <laughs> Louis told me like, hey, did you ever think about doing this? I was like, oh, Okay, interesting. Let's let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So, of course, we can break up for many different reasons. We could be the ones to break up a relationship with our partner, or we could be the abandoned ones. Uh, our partners could break up with us. We could be married and then divorce. Our spouses can divorce us. Um, we could have friends and be best of friends for many years and then all of a sudden fall out. And that's also to be considered a breakup. Uh, we could also have, uh, let's say, mm, a working relationship, working for a company or a business, and then you kind of fall out of love with that company and that's also considered a breakup. There's so many different ways that we could analyze this. There could be happy breakups. There could be sad breakups. There could be breakups that devastate us because we're obsessed with the person that broke up with us. And then we just, we feel so destroyed inside for the longest time. But then there could also be the type of breakup where we, uh, we, we feel relieved. Like, oh, thank goodness it's over. I feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. So there's a lot of different ways we could approach this topic, which made me think a really long time about the perfumes that I would choose. The 10, if we're gonna limit ourselves to 10. So let's begin with, with the most diabolical. Okay, the most diabolical, I took the example of Lady Diana, May she rest in peace. When her divorce happened, actually, I think it was right before the divorce happened. So she was officially separated from, from King Charles. Now he's King Charles. From King Charles. And she had her kind of one of those official outings. And do you guys remember the revenge dress that she wore? And everybody kind of baptized. You can Google it and see it. Lady Diana revenge dress. It was kind of the dress that she wore to look like a femme fatale, a bombshell, the sexiest dame in town to go at an outing. And she was spectacular. And they called it a revenge dress because it was a very, very sexy, sexy, I'm a woman in the control of my own life and I can have whoever I want type of dress. So I thought to myself, now that is a good way to start this selection. And which perfume would be this diabolical <laughs> type of, you know what I mean, scenario. And I thought to myself, boy, you gotta be a savage, keyword, to do this. And yes, believe it or not, it would be Sauvage Elixir. It would be Sauvage Elixir or Sauvage Elixir, as the French would call it. Um, it's a beast. It's a beast. I mean, this thing is a beast. I love it. I love it to bits. But this, this is definitely, definitely a revenge dress type of, you got to know how to dose it. You got to know how to play it sexy with Sauvage. Okay. If you overspray it, you're the loser in this scenario because you're just going to suffocate whoever's around you. No, 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 no. This is a calculative and a calculated type of revenge dress. You got to know how to dose it. You dose it sparingly and then you conquer you totally conquer. This thing is hypersexualized. Seriously, if you know how to dose it. A little goes a long way. Just a tiny bit. 
just a tip. Mm. Sauvage elixir. Seriously, this is the revenge. And then you go to a party or to a dinner or something, and you wear this just a little bit, just a little bit to lure in anybody around you, and then they're going to want you. And this is the revenge dress, hands down. Now, the second one, um, the opposite of that, pain, suffering. You are leaving somebody or somebody left you. Somebody maybe died. And, you know, that's also a separation. That's also a breakup if somebody passes away. And, and when they do, well, what do you do? You can't get them back. There's no way to get them back. You suffer tremendously. It's a particular type of breakup that has nothing to do with another person choosing somebody else over you. So you feel like, why? Why is that person better than me? No, this is literally life taking somebody away from you. And um, the type of tragic feeling that goes with that for me particularly, uh, Ensemble Mythique by Guerlain. Okay, the Eau de Parfum, this amber gray, gray, this is the way you, it makes you feel, this gray here. Uh, Netty says, something comforting? Well, this is an interesting point. I love how you, Net Netty just commented uh, in the chats, I, I love how you're kind of analyzing this from perspective. Okay, if you lose somebody, you want to wear something comforting. You could, but that's denial. And this video is not about being in denial. This, you know how I am. I'm always very direct. I like to confront the issue. If there's a problem, I want to confront it. And so also losing somebody you love, um, you have to deal with it. I'm not saying immediately, but perfume wise, this one would help. It doesn't comfort you, but it helps you acknowledge what has happened. You know, and some mythique is uh, ambergris heavy fragrance with a dusty damask rose, a deep, deep, deep damask rose. I mean, it, it's kind of, if you smell it the first time and, and of course it also has incense in it, but it, it, to many people, this one appears to be like, oh, it's such a cliche rose perfume, but it's not. There's something so secret about this one. It's almost as if it knows how life works. It's kind of, it has, I never quite managed to grasp it, but I get really close to smelling out like the secrets of the universe when I smell on some mythique. It is a mythical incense, right? I'm like, you know what? It's intense, but I'm going to spray it because I'm feeling, I'm in the mood. I'm in the mood. Oh my gosh, this thing is amazing. It's so beautiful, sad, deep. It's such a gothic fragrance as well. Um, and in the dry down, it becomes quite indolic because the ambergris is very poopy. And I know they're going to go like, oh my God, what the heck? Like a perfume should I? Well, but that's a part of fragrances. And this one has real ambergris in it, not ambroxan. Okay. So this one helps you go into the deep. And it, it guides you through that darkness, that, that precipice that you're in. And it kind of shows you the light. You know, it, it, it tells you it's okay. This darkness that you're in right now is necessary. You need this right now. But we will make it through. Such a beautiful perfume. I adore Ensemble Really, really adore it so, so, so much. Mm. And and it seems superficial, you know, okay, rose, incense, whatever. We've smelled them a thousand times. Eh, let it dry down and let that ambergris warm up on your... Ambergris takes some time to warm up on your skin. When the ambergris starts emanating, like about an hour into the perfume, you're going to go there. You're going to go there. You're going to go inside of the belly of Pinocchio's whale. You're going to be inside of that belly of the whale. Coincidentally, ambergris is fecal matter of a whale. Well, we, we don't really know if it's bursting parts of the intestines of a whale or poop of a whale, but 
It's the gold of the oceans because it's so expensive. Ambergris is very, very expensive. So anyway, there's that. You could check out my review of Ensemble Mythique on my channel. I've done a very, very detailed review of this one. I adore it. I adore this perfume. Now, the next one is um, a breakup where you feel invigorated after breaking up. This could be after a divorce. OK, and you've been struggling. It doesn't really matter who was right or wrong. Let's be very clear about this. This could be a divorce scenario where either you or your spouse decided to divorce each other. And then the whole process of the divorce begins and it's a terrible process and you're fighting and the lawyers are involved and the courts are involved. And are you going to settle? Are you not going to settle? And who's going to pay alimony to who and yada, yada, yada. But once that is all over. And actually, already during the process of negotiations with the lawyers, either out of court or in court, this is the perfume that I would wear. Okay. Coincidentally, I would also recommend it to lawyers. Chanel number 19. And I would wear the Eau de Parfum for this occasion, not the Eau de Toilette. I love the Eau de Toilette and I love the Parfum as well. Uh, but I think the Eau de Parfum is a little bit more docile. So, um, and because it's green, I'm using green screen, obviously kind of everything looks a little bit transparent, doesn't it? Oh, look at this. It's so funny how the liquid turns. If it's like combined with the beige of my hand, you see the liquid. But if I shift it to the side, it's gone. Magic. Just like the divorce. Once it's over, the per your ex-spouse is gone. Gone like magic. So this one... Oh, I love it so much. This one gives you that power, that self-esteem back. It kind of allows you to stand up straight, shoulders straight, and just say, you know what? I'm dignified. I'm going to make it in my life. I'm going to go forward with my life. This is not the end of me. Um, I This was a rocky ending to my relationship or to my marriage, but I know that I can build myself up. And actually, I'm already stronger because I made it through the wilderness. That's what number 19 literally gives you. It's dry, but the eau de parfum, uh, you know, the eau de toilette would be extremely dry. A dry sheep. The eau de parfum is not too dry. This uh, formulation or concentration was developed in the 90s. So we're way past the 70s when the original was created. So it's, it's a different time. The 90s were a little bit more mellow, softer, sweeter. So Jacques Polge delivers the Eau de Parfum uh, concentration, which has a little bit, it, it's a little bit more tamed. You know what I mean? It's a little bit more friendly, as friendly as 19 can be, because number 19 is not a friendly perfume. It's a detached, per it's like after the divorce or even during the negotiations of the divorce, you're like, you're detached already. You see what I mean? You're detached, but it's slightly sweet, hence why the Eau de Parfum concentration, the one of choice for this instance. The sweetness in it also kind of allows you to emanate to that other person that you're separating from. You know what? I'll be sweet for someone else. Not for you, though. Not for you. Oh, love number 19. Mm, mm -mm, adore it. So that, that was my number three. Now... Um, number four is kind of like if you're a bit younger, uh, Cha, what happened to this one? Oh, it got dirty somehow. How did it get dirty? I don't know. Oh, it fell down the other day, I think. Did it? Oh, no, it didn't. Okay. <laughs> it has my makeup on it. I'm like, what happened to it? So if you're... If you're, uh, this is more for kind of a youthful breakup and you're very horny and you're, you're super young and let's say you were really into a person and then that person kind of just said, you know what, I don't want to be with you anymore, whatever. Or they start ghosting you and you just pick yourself up and you say, you know what, I'm just going to go dancing. I don't care. And let me just go and have sex with somebody else. Ah, transparent again, because it's green. No, but you can see it if I put my hands behind it. There you go. So it's Le Mal, Jean-Paul Gaultier, the eau de toilette concentration, the classic one. Uh, I love this one to bits. I know it has kind of a bad reputation nowadays because, you know, everybody and their weird uncles wear this one. <laughs> I still love it to bits. It's, it's one of the most beautiful things to come out 
perfumes, no, no gender, but advertised to men, one of the best things to come out of the 90s for men. This one and Opium pour Homme, Eau de Parfum, I adore them. But Le Mal, in particular, for for that party vibe, this the gorgeous Francis Courjan lavender in here, it just, it delivers, honey, delivers good vibes, positive vibes, nostalgia vibes, anything goes, we're happy, we're horny, you left me, I don't care, I already got a queue of people waiting in line, next. That's literally, thank you, next. To quote Ariana Grande, that's this perfume. I think it's a great one for a breakup, of for that type of breakup. So, so the next one, I want to say, okay, so the next one is I, perhaps more of a perfume that you would use for a respectable breakup, where, which is very, really very rare, very, very rare, that both of you have just outgrown each other, but you're both really intelligent and emotionally intelligent people, so you both tell each other, you know what? This has run its course. Let's break up. And both of you are totally fine with breaking up. Both of you are not sad. You thank each other for everything you've given each other in your life. It's been an amazing journey, but now time to move on. And that acknowledgement is like, kind of almost like, take me to church. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, and believe it or not, the best one for that type of acknowledgement and happy separation, going your own way without any bitter remorse, without feeling angry at the person. You're both, and I, like I said, it's a very rare instance. Doesn't happen often, but when it happens, this is the perfume for it. It would be incense, a series from Comme des Garçons, Avignon. The Avignon Incense Series, uh, they have five uh, incenses. It's a Series 3, Comme des Garçons collection of... I love them. I love all of them. Avignon is particularly beautiful in that regard. It's like, we good. We good, boo. We good. See, uh, we could still be friends, you know? It's all good. But we are... Intelligent, evolved, mature, wise human beings, and we're, we're done with each other. That's the perfume to wear for that occasion, for that goodbye, for that goodbye. Incense Avignon by Comme des Garçons. Gorgeous incense, gorgeous. Um, oh, Tisha, thank you so much. Your perfume review is the best in the world. Thank you, Deco. Oh, man, guys, thank you so much for what? <laughs> thank you. Yes, BB, you will be sweet for someone else. It's a mood, right? That was the one for, for Le Mal. Totally. So, so th that's that, right? We got, okay, we're halfway through. Now, the next one, okay, the next one um, is a, I mean, listen, you can't go wrong with this one. Uh, this is a perfume that I would wear after a heavy breakup. You've been left, Okay. Uh, you did not leave, somebody left you, so you are devastated, but you pick yourself up and you say, you know what? I've cried, I've suffered for weeks now, I'm, I'm just, no, I have to. It, this next perfume is literally Cher in, in Moonstruck when she uh, slaps um, Cusack. Was it Cusack? Yeah, I think so. She slaps it and snap out of it. Okay, that snap out of it moment that Cher does in Moonstruck, another one of the movies I adore from the 80s. Well, that snap out of it moment can only be, can only be one perfume for me. And that would be Chanel number no. five, Extra, okay? It's the pure perfume of Chanel number no. 5. I have the spray version because I love it the most. Uh, 7.5 ml, that's all they offer. Oh, there's a little droplet. Okay, let's dab it on here. Oh my gosh. Mm, it's actually mixing quite well with uh, Ensemble Mythique. But this one's almost empty. I gotta refill it soon. So this little spray, Chanel number no. 5 Parfum. It's the one that picks you up. 
it's the one um it's the one that Nicolas Cage oh yeah 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 Nicolas Cage Nicolas Cage and Moonstruck thanks thanks sweet things Nicolas Cage with share this is the one that picks you up slaps you in the face and says move on move on B I and then TCH you know you got a life to live ain't nobody gonna stop you now You've, you've cried, that's okay, now we're moving on. Pull yourself together and conquer the world. That's Chanel number five. It is that majestic. The, the jasmine in here, the May rose, the ilang ilang, the powdery notes in there, the vanilla, the patchouli. I mean, this thing has everything. It, it's just, it's everything and it gives you everything. It gives you all the strength you need to move on. Perfection. Now, the next one... Um, is an interesting fragrance because, well, it's a it's an interesting scenario. It's a scenario where, and I'm sure you guys have had this before. Tell me if I'm wrong. You've been together with somebody, and it was a passionate love affair, maybe even a relationship. Maybe it even went further than a love affair, and. You were just so horny for the way they smelled. Their perfume combined with their own skin, you know, the smell of their own hormones and chemicals. But anyway, every time you smell that perfume, it triggers you, right? So like, let's say the breakup was terrible because they were a douche and they just left you because they're, you know, they just, they can't commit. It, it was terrible. They, they haven't been honest with you, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And then you're like, oh my God, such a douchebag. Why did I even bother? But then months pass or years pass and, and you smell that perfume again. It hits you all of a sudden. And you're like, oh, you know what? Good dick is a prison, as they said in Girls. <laughs> so anyway, so when a perfume triggers that memory... That's a sort of breakup perfume that you don't really choose, but it takes you there anyway, whether you like it or not. And then you kind of reminisce and you go, you bite your lip like, mm, you know, if they wrote me now, maybe I might, <laughs> I might even like answer to that DM or whatever. You know what I mean? So anyway, the concept, and now obviously to each person, it's a different perfume if you've experienced something like this. However, However, uh, I just chose one perfume to symbolize this concept. I'm not saying that this perfume triggers it in me because this perfume does not trigger this in me, but I love the name of this perfume. And that's why I think this perfume is more of a concept rather than a smell. But it is... Memo oh my God, it's completely green. So, Memoir d'une odeur, right? It's Gucci. And what is so fascinating about... Yeah, forget about it. It's completely green on the gr green screen. So yeah, it's definitely like a ghost memory of an odor. Literally, mémoire d'une odeur. So in French, it means the memory of a smell, the memory of a scent. So the fact that it's transparent just totally makes sense. It's like, it's gone, girl. You can't have it no more. You can't have it no more. It gone. But, but... But you remember, and, and coincidentally, the perfume is discontinued as well, unfortunately, because it kind of is a good one. It took a time, it took a while for it to grow on me, but it did. And uh, no, no, it's fine. We don't need to. Uh, so anyway, um, so I want to say Memoir d'une odeur is really, really, it's the name of the perfume that really meets this standard, right? The smell of it, like I said, each perfume is different for all of us. So if, if, if your lover wore a specific type of perfume after breakup, you smell that perfume again a couple of years later and you go like, mm, that'll do it for you. But the concept of it is a memory of a scent, right? And you double down the symbology and the symbolism of it because this one is also discontinued. So, but Memoir de Nodeur in itself is an interesting concept of a um, Roman chamomile it has a very medicinal smell, uh, this perfume. It's very nostalgic. It, there's a sadness to it. There's a, there's a stillness to it. There's a dreaming of lost past times to it. There's a notion of escapism in it. It's, uh, it's interesting. It's a really, really interesting one on it, in its own right. 
but it's I chose it for the name to deliver the concept of reminiscing of times long gone and redesiring the carnal aspect of that relationship. <laughs> now, cha, where was I? Yes, <laughs> the next perfume is also fascinating. The next one I chose because it's a chameleon. And I think um, an interesting perfume to wear while you're breaking up is a perfume that will take your mind off of whatever you're going through. Whether you broke up with someone or someone broke up with you, um, you don't want to think too much about what's going on because it drives you nuts or it could potentially drive you nuts. Now, this perfume is a wonderful chameleon that keeps you guessing. And because it keeps you guessing, it kind of teases you in a way. So your mind, it manages to take your mind off of things, even if just for a split second. For me, it's worth it, right? If it can take my mind off of uh, any sort of uh, troubles I'm going through, even for one second, yes. I say go for it. And that perfume for me would be Patricia de Nicolai's number one intense. I think this is a gorgeous perfume for a breakup uh, because it's so masterfully blended and it keeps changing on the skin and it keeps teasing you. The, the tuberose in here, after hours of wearing it, it kind of pokes at you from time to time. And you're like, where did that come from? And the first time I wore this perfume, I was smelling it on my arm and I was like, wait, where is it? I can't find the perfume. But then like, I would just watch TV. And then like one hour later, I would just get a waft in my nose of tuberose. And I'd be like, where did that come from? And I tried to smell it, I smell it, sniff it on my arms or wrists. I couldn't find it again. And just, it's an interesting teasing fragrance, right? Number one intense. And, um, and every time that I would get a waft of it, I would forget whatever I was doing in that moment. It would literally take my, my mind off of things and I would just go into this kind of looking for the fragrance all over again. It's such a, such a beautiful, masterful perfume. Um, oh my gosh, really. Like you see that somebody who really knows what they're doing with chemistry, uh, they know what they're doing. They know how to manipulate you, right? They know how to build a formula that will mess with you in the best of ways. So this one will keep your mind off of things. And that's why it's definitely in my top 10. Coincidentally, thanks to Vel for um, introducing me to this perfume. All right. Now, where are we now? We did one, two, three, four, five. Ah, okay. So there's a sense of desperation once we uh, are abandoned by someone. And then the breakup makes you feel like you will forever be alone. If somebody broke up with you for another person, they left you for someone else. And you start thinking, what do they have that I don't have? Am I that ugly? Am I that stupid? Uh, Am I that lackluster when it comes to sense of humor? Um, am I emotionally not intelligent enough? Am I, am I lacking in the bed department? Am I lacking? Like, you just feel shitty. You feel like you're worth nothing. And, and there's an actual perfume that uh, <laughs> symbolizes that, believe it or not, that sort of depression, that sort of feeling really depressed and beat down. And, and there is a perfume. There literally is a perfume for that. And it's a kind of a depressing one, but I adore it. I adore it, darling. And that would be Maura or Mahora, right? Or Maura, as they would say it in French. It is, it is a Guerlain fragrance. And I think, in fact, in the back, we have the Guerlain name in this golden thing. There it is, right there. Um, it's a tuberose fragrance with almonds, a lot of almonds. And it, it, the way that they advertise this perfume, which, by the way, flopped. So they took it off the market like literally a year or two after it was introduced in the early 2000s. Um, it, it's it's kind of like a, a, a seed. And in fact, it is like a seed, like a pod. Uh, and you have to twist it 
to open it up to spray. So it's kind of like the pod. It's like, oh, it's like closed and then it opens up, right? It's kind of like the advertisement campaign for this perfume was in the desert. There's no life in the desert. There's no water in the desert. And yet there's this one plant that's growing in the middle of the desert. And it's a lonely plant. It's all alone. And it feels like all the odds are against it. That's you when you've been abandoned by your partner, right? That you loved. And there's no life left in that desert. And yet some, something still lives. There's something very depressing about how this one smells. And I adore it. In general, I say this about most older pre uh uh, Thierry Vassa uh, formulations of Guerlain from the Guerlain family. While the Guerlain fathers, grandfathers, sons have been designing Guerlain fragrances, there's something very heavy about their perfumes, something nostalgic, something otherworldly, sad and depressed. It has to do somewhat with the depression of the rich bourgeoisie in France, because these men, they come from this opulent rich family. Uh, so their perfumes also reflect the notion that they have of reality. But this one was designed by one of the eldest, right, Guerlain's, in his really, really advanced age. So there's you, there's also a notion of death in here. You, you smell out that the person who created this fragrance knows that time is limited, that the end is nigh, nigh uh, that it's coming. And so they... They've imbued this perfume with that as well. Uh, it's a very lonely fragrance, uh, but it's a beautiful one. It really opens your eyes to the limitations of life and, and how limiting life is. And But it's a beautiful perfume. And I want to thank uh, Emilio, by the way, also check out his channel on YouTube. I'll be posting a link to his uh, perfume review channel because he introduced me to, to Maura. And uh, so very thankful for that, Emilio. Thanks. And I adore it. I adore this perfume. It's heavy. It's intoxicating. Longevity is beast. And it keeps reminding you that time is very, very limited. There's a sadness to it, like a, de a depressing factor to it that I adore. It's just, it's, 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 it's like life. It's literally like life. Plus, you have the seed, right, that opens up and then you kind of, sp you push this down and then you spray it on, you give life to this juice that's in here. And then on your skin, you smell it develop and evolve and then kind of fade and then it becomes, it turns into nothing in the end, you know. And it, it reminds you as it's dying on your skin constantly, as you're kind of sniffing it, it reminds you how everything comes to an end. It, it, it's it's the perfume of an end. It, it's very, very potent. I, I adore it and I respect it very, very much. Uh, Maura by Guerlain. The last one, we've come to the end of our journey. The last one, number 10, would be the fragrance that really, really wakes you up and tells you, you know what, we've been on this trajectory. We've gone through loss. We've gone to separation. We've gone through breakups, whether we've been abandoned or whether we have abandoned. It's enough now. Now I'm taking, I'm taking the time to rest. We rarely do this because usually we have a tendency when a breakup has happened, then we rush off immediately. Be, oh my God, I can't be alone. I need somebody in my life. I can't be alone. I can't be alone. I cannot be alone. And then you settle for less. You settle for whatever's out there. And the older you get, the more you settle for whatever's out there because you get more and more FOMO, fear of missing out the partner before it's too late. But there's that one time when you might feel strong enough to say, you know what? Hold on a minute. All right, I'm single now. And you know what? So be it. I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm going to enjoy my own oats. I'm going to feel my own oats. I'm not going to go flirting outside. I'm not going to go hunting for anybody. It's, I, I'm not going to go swiping left and right on all the apps. I, I really don't care. I am enough for me. And I'm going to take for myself what I need to feel good. Okay? If I'm going to have to, you know, buy myself a special coffee every day with a donut, so be it. If I'm going to have to go to Hermes and buy myself a bracelet, so be it. If I'm going to have to go and buy myself a little something, something Louis, so be it. 
and I'm not going to answer the calls and I'm not, people are going to want to meet up with me. No, I'm going to, no, I'm going to be egotistical about this. I'm going to allow myself to be an egoist. <laughs> so this is the perfume um, to end all perfumes when it comes to breakups. I think egoist is the one. Egoist is the one. That, and again, I say perfumes, no, no gender. So obviously, ladies, gents, anybody, this is a beautiful sandalwood. Oh my gosh, so majestic. Not egoist platinum. Forget about that one. We're talking egoist, okay? The OG. The name says it. Like, honey, I've been giving and giving and giving. Now it's time for me to be an egotistical brat about myself. Time for me to also take something for myself. That's egoist. Egoist, the perfume says it all. I mean, the name is already programmed, right? Am I right or am I right? Oh, The Real Shaking says, I've never heard of egoist. Well, it's kind of rare to find. It's been discontinued in many countries because it was introduced in the early 90s and it wasn't very popular outside of Europe. So in America, it sold very poorly. This is one of the reasons, coincidentally, why Chanel then commissioned uh, Jacques Polge to make a flanker immediately. And that's why Egoist Platinum was released like literally a year later. And Egoist Platinum or Platinum is the one that is selling much better still to this day. It's kind of a fougere lavender metallic concoction. Not a big fan of the current formula. I loved the 90s formula, but they reformulated it. They butchered it. I'm not, I'm not a fan of the current formula of Egoist Platinum. But the current formula of Egoist, yes, it's also been reformulated. I'm really enjoying the current formula. It's quite smoky. The sandalwood in here bites a little bit with the smokiness. It's a zesty, smoky fragrance. Really, really, really beautiful. Netty says, I remember the original advertisement for this one. You know, all the women in the house, what was in the south of France, opening all of those windows, the blinds of the windows, egoist, egoist, all the women in the building. The egoist had all of them. And they're all screaming for him. And all of the women in every apartment are angry that, that he has left each and every one of them. You know what I mean? And he's like kind of like almost completely naked in his room with just a towel around it. He looks, of course, like a, you know, for back in the 90s standards, like, you know, super sexy guy, right? Somebody who would be on OF nowadays. But um, what a wonderful commercial. That's back in the day when Chanel commercials were really cool. Now Chanel commercials is like so unmemorable. They're terrible nowadays. But back in the day, they were amazing. So Egoist is the one, you guys. This is the one you wear to take your life back into your own hands and just be like, you know what? Now it's time for me. Thank you. Bye. See you later. You know, see ya. Don't want to be with ya. And that's that. I hope you, uh, I hope you enjoyed my top 10 list of um, perfumes for a breakup. Thank you, Louis, for inspiring this video. And I want to know what you guys like to wear after breakups. I do not wish a breakup to anyone. But in case you have gone through it and you want to share which smells worked for you, would be really cool to know in the comment section down below. So let us know. And let me know what you thought about my video. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Fragrant love. Subscribe.